What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Movie Man Greg, coming at you guys with a full movie review for Forrest Gump. Now, I know a lot of people just come here just to see my interpretation on how I felt about Jenny. I'm going to save that relationship breakdown at the end of the reaction. So, um, well, the review. Now, at this point, I'm going to go over what my honest take was about this movie and what I felt about it. Um, so, first off, what I would like to say as far as for Forrest Gump, what made this movie great was the historical references. If you didn't catch a lot of those historical references because you didn't know, the movie might not have been as entertaining as it could have been. The more knowledge that you know about it and you'll see the relevance between everything is what made this movie so great. Like, for an example, time when they're telling this story was obviously was desegregated. Um, the other things that was pretty funny or entertaining was how Forrest Gump got his name. You know, he was named after Nathan Bradford Forrest, who was the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. That's what his mama decided to name him. So it was like those little historical moments um, is what made this show or this movie a little bit more entertaining. Um, also, like how they even brought up other historical figures. You had Elvis, you had Kennedy, you had John Lennon, you had Richard Nixon, and so many more historical figures pop in and out of this movie, which again, made it extremely entertaining. Um, it also even talked about uh, different times, like the time where there was segregation, especially in the South. Um, the Watergate, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, th the thing is what I loved about the whole Watergate scandal on how it played a role with Forrest Gump, where, you know, he was just a regular guy just trying to do his civic duty by trying to help other people. Like, yo, the power is out. It looks like those people need help over there. But knowing that that was part of the Watergate scandal and they're saying that Forrest Gump was one of the people who actually, you know, kind of blew the whistle, but not trying to blow the whistle, he was trying to be helpful. He was the whole cause of how they got caught to begin with. So I feel like that was a real interesting take to show it from Forrest's viewpoint. Um, then you also had other historical moments, like you had the assassination attempts between all the different presidents and governors. Um, and then lastly, you had the big Vietnam War, you know, where he actually took place of, as being a soldier during one of the most brutal wars that the U.S. have seen besides the actual Civil War. Um, so there was like those moments that they all touched in which made the movie, again, even more entertaining. From the very beginning, we was able to see how this young, simple boy who looks like they was not going to be able to amount to anything to literally crush everything that he touched. So from being a young kid to learning how to run, and the next you know, he becomes a football star in college. So someone you thought who wasn't even going to go to college end up getting a full scholarship and becomes a football legend. So that was number one. Then he becomes a ping pong champion, not just a regular ping pong player, a ping pong champion. Like man's got endorsement deals, he was getting money. Everybody wanted to be a part of his life as a ping pong champion. After that, you know, or actually probably during that time, he was in the army. He was saving people. This man literally saved his entire platoon. So to see how, again, a simple-minded guy who literally goes into these different activities and is crushing it, you know, he goes into the shrimping business. He's not just a regular shrimper. He literally becomes one of the biggest shrimping companies ever, you know, and then he comes out with bubblegum shrimp. It was so big in the movie, they made a real bubblegum shrimp. So it is great. And then lastly, you know, he becomes a cross country runner who ob obliterates records just by running across country. So even though he's a simple guy, you know, he has no ego. Nothing is holding him back. You know, so it's like once you teach him the simple basics of something, he masters it. You know, football. He didn't know the actual intricate plays on how to run certain plays and to read defenses and offenses. He knew when I have the ball, I got to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. Just run. And he was the fastest person and he can just do that. Just run. Same thing with ping pong. He was like, hey, I don't need to know all the intricacies of, you know, what this is called, what that is called. 
All I got to do was follow the ball and hit the ball. Boom, 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 boom. And he became a master as following the ball, keeping your eye on the ball, and hitting it. Simple as that. Same thing with the army. Simple. Do what you're told. Like, even the drill instructor was like, yo, you're going to be a general someday because that's the smartest goddamn answer I've ever seen or ever heard. You know, and because of that, he knew how to follow instruction to the its simplest form. When he was told to do something, he just did it and he did it efficiently. You know, so it's a trend. Even though he might not be complex, even though he doesn't have no ego, ego holding him back or pride holding him back or anything like that, his simplicity, simplicity, his simplistic take was able to help him literally master everything that he touched, you know. So, and that's what made it great from beginning to the end. No matter what he did, he became amazing at it, even though he's a, such a simple guy. Now. To dig a little bit deeper as far as what also made this movie great, I will say is his relationships. The relationships with key people literally helped mold this movie and move it along. So first off, we're going to talk about his mama. His mama was amazing, you know, and she was willing to do anything and everything to make sure that her son got a fair shake. And when I say anything, she was willing to get down and dirty if it meant Forrest Gump her son was able to be in a normal class. And when I say down and dirty, y'all know what I'm talking about. She was willing to get down and dirty. So that's how much she loved her son. She was willing to go beyond, above and beyond to make sure that no one treated her son less than. But she also did a really great job as far as instilling that into him. Like, hey, you're no better than anybody, but you're no worse than anybody. So don't, you can treat everybody with respect, dignified, but make sure people are treating you the same way. Simple as that. And he carried that, you know, along with so many other life lessons along with him to the end. So the next relationship we're going to dive into a little bit is, is Bubba, his best friend. And I think this relationship dynamic was amazing. That was his best friend because they were both so simple. They, they literally was right there neck and neck when it comes to their social standards, their, their way of thinking. So because of that, they were able to connect with each other at the purest level. You didn't have to worry about them making fun of each other or looking down at each other. They just talked about what they love and they just loved hearing about, you know, their own experiences. But it was at a, again, neck and neck level where there was mutual respect, mutual interest. Um, but the other thing was, hey, do you want to go into the shrimping business with me? Yes. Okay, even though he died, he still kept his word, you know, and which is a very admirable trait. Like, he could have easily been like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. He died. I don't want to do it no more. He kept his promise even after death that, yo, we're going to own a boat and we're going to go into the shrimping company together. So I, felt, I also felt it was amazing that he even, you know, even though Bubba is dead, he didn't have to do it. He literally gave his family 50% of the company which was amazing. So again, showing love at its purest form, simplest form, just do right by the people who you love and care about and, and everybody else, even if you don't love them, just still do right by people. Then we have Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> now, this relationship was very entertaining because how stubborn Lieutenant Dan was. Like my mans was going through life pissed because he didn't die. And the reason why, he literally thought his legacy was to go to war and die. Like, I failed that life because I went to war and I didn't die. I halfway died. I got my legs blown off, but I didn't fully die. And because of that, you messed up God's plan. You messed up, you know, what was designed for me. You messed up what was my destiny. You know, what I was born to do, which was to go to war and die and it took years years for him to get over that fact but the the relationship that he had with Forrest is what helped him get over that you know what i really found what felt was interesting was you know he didn't let anybody ever disrespect Forrest, no matter what you don't ever call Forrest stupid because it's like at the same time it's like you think he's stupid what you think about me you think i'm a cripple 
I ain't no cripple. I might not have no legs, but I ain't no cripple. So you better not disrespect me and you better not disrespect Forrest. You don't deserve that right. You haven't earned that right. Like, this man is a hero. You just don't even know about it. You know, so it was always cool to see him defend him. Um, but as him, as himself, he, you know, he would laugh at Forrest. Like, yeah, the day you own a boat, I'll be your first mate. I'll be your first captain, whatever. And it's like, he doubted him. Everybody be doubting for us. And next thing you know, guess what? He get his boat. What I did appreciate was that he was a man of his word. And he became his first mate. He's like, I'm not going to be calling you sir or no shit like that. But I said, if you do this, I'll be here. It was a joke. But at the same time, you did it. So I'm here. So I think that was uh, a great relationship. And that was also a great example on maybe why Forrest you know, did what he did with Bubba Gump's family, you know, gave him 50% because it was the right thing to do. You know, he said he was going to do something. He, uh, he still made the company, even though Bubba died. And then he felt like it was the right thing to do to give them their money. So yeah. So then you have that whole aspect. Now, last, but definitely not least, we're going to get to the relationship between him and Jenny. All right. So as you guys know, they known each other for as you know, when they were kids, so a very, very long time. You know, he loved that girl since the very first time he met her. You know, she was the most beautiful thing he ever find, saw or whatever. Okay, great. So the, the story about Jenny is an interesting one, right? Because it starts off that, you know, we understand and learns that she's been molested by her father. That's jacked up, messed up. Um, but not only that, it's never unpacked. She has that extreme trauma in her life that probably haunts her to, to the day she dies. You know, that that's something that can alter and change someone's life, perspective, the way they treat others, the decisions that they make. Again, I understand that and I get that. It's, it's nothing that's small, um, which is huge, you know. One thing she wanted to do, she wanted to become rich and famous to help her escape her problems. She wanted to be a bird so she can fly, fly away. And But she also understood becoming rich and famous, having money, could be something that can help solve that emptiness, that loneliness, that, that trauma that she never dealt with. You know, that could be something that could be a solution, which may or may not have been. You know, but uh, again, that trauma helped... I won't say help. That trauma guided her to make the decisions that she made, which, again, she made some really terrible decisions at certain points. So let's just go a little bit further to the next time that they meet, which is in college. You know, they <laughs> they have their interaction. You know, she's trying to become rich and famous. She's on stage performing. Um, but then they end up going back to her college dorm, you know, where they have a moment where they are about to get down and dirty. But because Forrest is very inexperienced, he end up he end up showing his inexperience at that moment. As you know, you know like he blew his load like immediately. They didn't even get to first base, and my man's was already done. So, with that being said, I can understand at that point why she wouldn't want Forrest. You know, Forrest he's very unex inexperienced. We already know he's simple-minded. If anybody knows, she knows. She's been knowing since he was little. You know, she probably wanted something more, something that's going to challenge her, something that's going to excite her, something that's going to, you know, give her that feeling. Instead of just someone just being in love with her, it's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard to give that love back when you're not getting the feelings that you want to get. I understand that. Again, I'm not faulting her for not wanting Forrest at that point. So, again, they go their separate ways. He goes off to war. She goes and do her hippie life. All right, so fast forward. She's a full-fledged hippie at this point. You know, she's all about peace, love. She's something to believe in, something to fight for. Um, but then also we see moments where she's with another guy, where she's getting abused. Clearly, at this point, she's in an abusive relationship. She might not feel like she deserves anything better. Hey, this is a good guy. He hits me, but his heart is in the right place. He probably won't do it again. 
you know, he's fighting for something bigger than him, a cause, he's with the Black Panthers, all this other stuff, making excuses on why she's with this man that she's with, all right? Again, she has so much unpacked trauma, she probably don't know how to deal with these emotions or these relationships on who she should and shouldn't be with. I get that. Understanding? No judgment there, all right? Then, fast forward a little bit, you know, we kind of see that she's she's doing a lot of partying. There's a lot of drugs being taken place, thoughts of suicide. Again, understand people go through the, those emotions. Uh, things happen. Get it. No judgment there. So then she tries, hey, this life is not working out. Let me go back and see how Forrest is doing. Let's see if I can make things work there. So she shows up on, you know, in this front lawn. Get it? They they have great moments. They're loving each other. They're laughing. There's fireworks. She buy him some shoes. A lot of da da da. Everything is great. But at that moment, you can clearly see whether she may feel like she don't deserve this good man, or again, she might be uninterested because it's not challenging. There's no drama. Uh, like this man just loves me, but he probably don't even know what love is because if he did, he would love me because I don't deserve it. Again, all that trauma that's that's literally haven't been accounted for could be helping her influence these de decisions on why she's not wanting to be with Forrest. They end up making love one time and she dips in the morning. Again, no judgment there. I get it. I'd rather for her to leave to do whatever she was going to do, whether if it was to go to rehab, whether if it was to get her own life together, to get a job, stand on her own two feet. Cool. Whatever. You, maybe you just don't love Forrest the way he needs to be loved. Get it. Move on. No judgment there. Now, because of that, you know, she just dips at, she didn't tell him where she was going or anything like that, which she could have had a conversation like, hey, this is not working. I got to go. Whatever it may be, she just ended up leaving. Because of that, he's heartbroken. He's devastated. He's like, you know what? I'm going to just go for a job. And he goes for a jog for three years. And then at the end of that jog, we understand that the reason why he was jogging for so long is because he's trying to let go of the past. He's trying to let go of the hurt that he felt with Jenny. He literally said, you know, at the end of it, my mom says, you got to be able to let go of the past. And I felt like that's what the running was about. Boom. Answer. He's getting over his shit the only way he know how, which is a little bit ridiculous, which was to go on a three, month, three year run. All right. All right, so here's the part that I get a little bit annoyed and aggravated at as far as for the people trying to make excuses for Jenny at this point, you know? Because again, I understand how she came to where she's at. I understand the trauma and the impacts that it can make on your decision making. I get all that. But now it's to the point where it's been years and she writes him a letter, all right? We, we established that. She writes him a letter. He shows up, everything's good because she knows where he lives. She, he's always lived in the same spot. She knows where he's been at. All right, she sees him on TV, all this other good stuff. All right, so she writes him a letter. Hey, show up. I got something to talk to you about. I would love to see you. He shows up. Guess what? First thing, he dro she drops a bomb on him. You have a son, Forrest Jr. You, I named him after your daddy. That's all fine and dandy and everything, but the kid is like anywhere between six to eight years old. Why are you just now telling me right now? Why didn't I get this letter six to six to eight years ago? Okay, a lot of people will say, uh, again, excuse, she needed to get her life together. She was probably in rehab. She had drugs, you know, she was doing a whole bunch. A lot of people has been making a lot of excuse, excuses for this woman. No, no, if, if anything, for those reasons alone, that should have been why he should have been notified immediately. You know, he was making money. He owned companies. He had his own house. He was stable. Yes, he was simple. Yes, you might have been scared that he wasn't able to take care of him. But in the situation, if you're using the excuse that she needed to go to rehab and get her own life together, that's fine. You're right. She needed to get her own life together. But that's not an excuse for not telling him that he had a son out there, especially six to eight years later. Now, if she would have wrote him a letter, you know, when it first happened and he didn't see it because he was on a three years of running, that's him. That's all on him. That's his fault. His ass was gone, whatever. 
But you didn't attempt to do that. The director didn't put in there saying, didn't make Jenny say, oh, I've written you several letters, but for whatever reason you didn't get it because you was on a run. No, she just wrote the one letter three to three years after the fact, after he was done running. So for six to eight years, you didn't say anything about him having a kid. That's strike number one for me. You know, that should have been immediate. Strike number two at this point. Oh, and again, a lot of people say, oh, she couldn't have reached out to him because she didn't. There was not like it was cell phones at the time. Again, he's been in the same house. She got in contact with him. How? Writing a letter. Could have wrote that letter six, eight years prior. All right. Okay. Strike number two. When I get there, boom, you have a son. All right. In the same day. Yes, it's the same day. With I'm, I'm gonna show it on the screen. But as you, as you see, she's in work clothes. Forrest Gump got these clothes on. And Junior got this striped shirt. And then in the next scene, them, they have the same clothes on. She changed her clothes because she's trying to get out of work. So the conversation literally went, hey, good to see you, Forrest. I've been following you. Hey, you know what? This is your son. Hey, his name is Forrest. And he's smart. You know what? Let me change my clothes and let's go and take little Junior to the park. And then we'll talk more there. Great. Okay, change your clothes. Let's go to the park. We get to the park. Guess what? I'm dying. That's literally how the conversation goes. You tell me you got a, that I got a son that you neglected to tell me for the last six to eight years, and now you're telling me that you're dying all in the same day. You know, so my question is, what would you have done if you were not dying? Would it have been, going, like, would it have been another six to eight years? Would you have not told him at all? Hey, your daddy was a deadbeat or whatever it may be. Oh, this is your daddy or whatever. But what is your excuse for not saying something six to eight years ago? Now that you're dying, now it's an appropriate time to tell him who his father is? Nah, fucked up. That's trash. Then literally almost in the same breath is, hey, let's get married. Yo, yo, again, I get that you're dying. I get that time is of the essence. I get that you want to do what's the best thing for your son. But you don't even wait a couple days. You don't even see how you feel when you see Forrest and y'all even start to really talk about what happened. Or, you know, see how you guys, you literally, in one single day, probably within, like, the sun is still shining while they're on the park. So I'm assuming that this conversation happened within an hour or two. You literally went from, you have a son. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Also, I'm dying. So, um, also, it's from a disease that uh, probably will prevent me from ever having sex with you. Plus, I think we should get married. Get the fuck. So, you mean to tell me I can't even consummate my marriage because I, I'm be at risk at catching, man? Nah, nah. That portion right there, that, that section of the movie of Jenny... That, that part of her character right there, trash. I don't care. Again, you can make the excuses. Well, she tried to do the right thing. No, you had six to eight years to do the right thing. If, if you would have came out and said that shit, even after the baby was born, maybe even within that one year, okay, be upset. Yo, you made me miss the birth of my son, whatever. Again, Forrest was running, whatever. That would have been on him. But there's no excuse for all that other time that's passed. I don't care what nobody say. It is what it is. That was a trash moment. Now, I'm not going to just say, hey, she's a, a terrible individual. Again, I acknowledge what she's went through, the, the trial and tribulations, the past that she's taken. She got a beautiful son out of the situation. I get that. But that section right there, trash. Nope. Can't, 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 can't let her go for that. But yeah, so all that happens. Now, you have, you're kind of happy for your man's for getting married to the love of his life, even though it's not under the pretense of she was in love with him. But still, at the end of the day, you want Forrest to be happy. Um, but with that being said, with everything that's, that the movie represented, the love, the, the, the character development of Forrest all the way through to the end, even a relationship with him and Jenny, the movie was incredible. Probably my favorite Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Hanks movie, by far. It's definitely a movie I recommend. Um, 
it also inspired me to start looking into other historical references that I may have missed. Um, that a lot of people in the actual comments of my video actually addressed. So that was pretty cool. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that's my review. It's one of the best Tom Hanks movies I've ever saw. Um, and it's it's a great movie. Like, I freaking love it. Like, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm going to be watching it again. And when my kids of of age and can start understanding stuff, I'm going to at least let them know about it. And hopefully they enjoy it too. All right. Um, but again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Um, if you did, make sure you smash that like button. If you want to check out my reaction, again, click on it at the end screen. Um, it should be popping up right here at any moment now. But again, thanks again. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I'll catch you guys at the next reaction. Until then, oh, in the comments, let me know what you guys thought as well. If you guys agree with my assessment, if you disagree, if you still want to debate about how trash Jenny was at the end, let me know. You know, I don't mind going back and forth a little bit as long as you make some good efforts of some good debating. All right. That's all I care about. All right. With that being said, I'll holler at you guys later. Love y'all. Peace.